Hello, New Life Church. I am so excited that we are gathering together for this week of prayer and fasting. It may not look like what we were hoping it would look like this week. If you are in the state of Arkansas right now, there's a likely chance there's snow on the ground outside. And some of you are so excited about that. I know my kids are, others may be less excited, but I know the timing of this did not in any way take God off guard. And so I've just been asking God like, what is your heart in it for us this week as a church? And I feel like he's just been bringing me back to the idea that he wants us to seek him first in our homes. So that's my prayer for all of us. If snow's on the ground and kids are playing outside, whatever life looks like for you this week, that we establish an atmosphere. We're seeking him in our home is just a natural rhythm. Prayer's a natural rhythm in our life. Maybe digging into the word or asking each other questions about the word just feels natural around the table or in conversation. Maybe you put on worship in the background on Spotify and you just have an atmosphere of worship in your home. I just believe God wants us to start at home this week. And I'm so excited to do this with you guys. Today, I'm going to be talking about our personal prayer life. And I know prayer has looked different for me in different seasons. I'm sure you can relate with that. There have been times in my life where seeking God with intentionality, with consistency and seeing him bring answers to my prayers and hearing his voice felt like a regular rhythm. And there've been other times where my prayer life was anemic and I was just fitting prayers in around my busy schedule. And if I'm being honest, I was really only calling out to God when something big was going on and I was feeling a need for him. And a few years ago, I just remember God challenging me. It was kind of a weird situation. I was at a Mediterranean restaurant. I had pulled up in my car and there was a Muslim man in the car beside me and he got out and he put his prayer rug down on the asphalt beside his car. And he bowed down and began to call on his God before lunchtime. And I remember God asking me the question, do you honor me and devote yourself to me the way that man does to his God? And I remember it was almost like God put a mirror in front of my face and just began to challenge me with what honoring God in a daily way would look like in my life. And I remember when I was up in college and even early years in marriage, I had a lot of liberty with how I used my time. I remember I would like dive into the word for two hours and get so much out of it. And I didn't have anyone asking me to stop and make them food or any little fingers coming under the door like is my normal life right now as a mom. And so I'm in a different season and the Lord has shown me it's okay to be in a different season. You can still seek me right where you are at. And I started drawing encouragement from the disciples because they were looking at this vibrant prayer life coming out of Jesus. And they were recognizing they did not have what he had. They were watching him get up while it was dark and go to lonely places and seek his father. And even as the crowds and the attention and the notoriety grew in Jesus's life, the Bible says that he often withdrew to lonely places to seek his father. So they saw how consistent he was and how as demands grew on his life, his pursuit of his father grew even more. And not only that, but they saw the results of that prayer life. They saw the anointing coming from him. They heard the wisdom in his words. They watched miracles and power moving in his life. They saw him operating kindness and self-control and they knew they needed what Jesus had. So just like an honest kid would, they said, can you just teach us how to pray? We don't have what you have. We don't know how to do this. And Jesus was like, I sure will. And the first thing he said is, first, I want to tell you what my father is not interested in. He doesn't want you to get up in front of people on a microphone and make a show of it. He is not interested in prayer that looks like a performance. He wants you to go to your house, go to your inner room, close the door when you're in a secret place and it's just you and him. And then he wants you to call out to him. That is the kind of prayer he's looking for. It's the kind of prayer he honors. And then he said, you don't have to use a lot of words. You don't have to repeat yourself over and over. You don't have to be eloquent because your father already knows what you need before you ask. You can keep it simple. You can keep it short. And then he gave them a 35 second prayer. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It starts there. 35 seconds. And when I was reading this, when I timed it, I remember the Lord setting me free. 
Because he said, Rebecca, you can fit this in the smallest amount of time you have to pray. And you can stretch this thing out for 20, 30 minutes if you have the time. And so now that has become a pattern. It's a frame by which I pray every day. And I just wanted to share what it looks like for me in my everyday life. I start by saying, Father in heaven, holy or hallowed be thy name. I love that Jesus always called God his father when he prayed over and over again. He's crying out to his father to let us know that is the relationship God wants with you and I. He is our loving father. He was our father before our human father was. He is a good and perfect father. He wants that kind of closeness with you and I that we could draw near to him the way my kids feel the freedom to draw near to me. But then he said, hallowed be thy name. That just means God, may your name be kept holy. Holy means pure, undefiled, set apart, high and lifted up. And this is a place where God has challenged me to literally take a posture of worship. The word worship means to lower yourself before anyone else out of honor. So if I can do it wherever I am, I bow, I get on my knees, or maybe I bow my head if I'm in a situation where I can't get on my knees. As I get older, to be honest, getting on my knees is harder. So you can lower yourself however it works for you. But I literally lower myself before the Lord and I just thank Him for who He is, for what He's done in my life. I may sing a song to Him. I may put worship on in the background. I may keep it short if my time's brief, but I start by honoring His name. And then it says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I love this statement because for me, it's a statement of surrender and submission. It's where I'm saying, God, I'm not asking for my kingdom. I'm asking for your kingdom. I'm not asking for my will. I am asking for your will to come on earth. What's my earth? Well, honestly, it's these territories we're praying over all week long. It starts here with me, with you, in your own heart, your own personal life. Then it moves out to your family. Then it moves out to our church, then to our city and our state, the state of Arkansas, and then it moves to our nation. So as I'm praying through that, sometimes the Lord brings things to the surface as I say, may your kingdom come and your will be done right now in me as it is in heaven, in my marriage as it is in heaven, in my kids. Maybe there's something that's on repeat in my mind about our church, in our church, whatever it is, as God brings it to the surface, I lay it before him. God, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then he says, give us today our daily bread. That's just a simple statement saying, God, we are asking you, Father, we are asking you for what we need today. It could be physical provision. It could be a word from his word burning in our heart that we draw life from throughout the day. It could be emotional. I can't tell you the amount of times I just say, God, will you give me an extra measure of hope and joy today? Because things like hope and joy and faith and patience and peace, self-control, those come from the Holy Spirit. So I just ask God, will you pour those into my life today? Give us today our daily bread. And then forgive us of our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. With that simple statement, I just say, God, search me. What today do I need to ask your forgiveness for? What situation, what, what thing did I make a mistake in? I just walked away and I knew it was wrong or maybe you're bringing it up now. What do I need you to forgive me of today? And who do I need to forgive? Is there a negative memory on repeat in my mind? Something someone did to me or said to me or didn't do and how it left me feel, let, left me feeling I just can't shake and I'm thinking about it. And I just say, God, will you help me forgive them as you forgive me? And I just speak it out. I forgive them right now in the name of Jesus. And I bless them in Jesus name. And then it says, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I love this place because it's the moment where we get to ask God for protection for the day, for that day from our weaknesses, from our weak areas. God knows the places that we can get into sin and bad spots very easily. And he says, I want you to ask me to protect you from that and deliver us if we're in that place. 
Maybe we find ourselves, maybe we have a, a, an issue with anger and all of a sudden we find ourselves angry. We can stop in that moment and say, God, will you deliver me from this? We can ask for his freedom and his deliverance every day. We can just say, God, will you break this sin pattern off of my life, whatever it is. And then the last statement, it says, for yours is the kingdom. I love how it moves into that because it's like, because nothing's too difficult for you. You can do anything you want. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever and ever. It all belongs to you, God. It all came from you. We're giving it all back to you. And that simple pattern has framed how I pray every day. And I just want to encourage you, if prayer is not normal for you, it is not a habit, set a goal, start simple, pick a pattern and just make a habit. I believe God wants to change our lives as we seek him this year. Let me pray over us. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your presence in our life. I thank you that you pursued us long before we sought you out, before we even knew your name. I thank you that through the blood of Jesus, we have access to your very throne room. And I pray today that you would increase our hunger for prayer and our discipline in prayer all throughout 2024. I pray families who have never prayed together will pray together this week and it will start to change them. I pray we would write things down we are believing you for and we will see you answer them and we will rejoice at your victory in our lives. We give you all honor this week. May you speak to us. May we hear your voice in Jesus name. Amen. Love you, New Life Church.